Andrea, would you like me to start? Yes, welcome, Roberta, uh, please, at your leisure. Okay. You. <laughs> Greetings to everyone. My name is Roberta Armijo. Um, I've been teaching with APS for 20 years, and I have been teaching with the Indian Education Department for 10 years. I currently teach at Hodgen Elementary, although I'm working from home now, um, as a resource teacher, and I work with grades K through 5. I specifically work with only Native American students. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of my background. I do not belong to a specific tribe. My lineage is mostly Hispanic and some Chiricahua Apache. My, um, growing up, most of my influence was Hispanic, and I also had a great influence from close friends at Santa Ana Pueblo and Santa Domingo Pueblo. I had a great influence from my family, specifically my aunts. One is Lakota from Eagle Butte, South Dakota, and my other aunt is Cherokee Choctaw from Oklahoma. I was influenced greatly by their teachings. I didn't know then that I was being taught teachings from the medicine wheel. It was not directly pointed out to me. After studying the medicine wheel and learning about its teachings, that's when I realized it. So what is a medicine wheel? A medicine wheel is used by some indigenous peoples to give teachings about life. It is based on harmony and it's based on balance. When we are balanced in life, we are happy. When we are lacking in a certain area in life, that's when struggles may arise. It is a sacred symbol used to represent all knowledge of the universe. The symbol itself is circular. It is usually broken down into four sections. The medicine wheel, which is sometimes called the sacred hoop or the sacred circle, is always a circular symbol. The number of sections, however, may vary depending on the origin. I'll touch on different medicine wheels a little bit later. Here, I'll be referring mostly to the one you see here, which is the Lakota medicine wheel. Each section of the medicine wheel consists of layers of teachings. All of these teachings, first of all, must be treated with honor and treated with respect when you are learning them or teaching them. Because the medicine wheel has been given to us to use as a tool for healing, for teaching, and for journeying through life. What is the medicine in the medicine wheel? The word medicine does not refer to any type of pill or drug. It is more of a force that comes from within. It is a power within yourself that you use to learn, to teach, and to grow. Medicine is used in the context of inner spiritual energy and healing. The history of the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel has been used for thousands of years by many, but not all Native American tribes. There are also cultures around the world that have similarities to the Native American medicine wheel. Where did the term medicine wheel come from? The term medicine wheel is not an indigenous term. It was given by the first Europeans. It is thought that it was first applied to the Bighorn medicine wheel in Wyoming, which you see here. This is a medicine wheel constructed on land and is thought to be around 1,000 years old. It is about 82 feet in diameter, that outer circle, and the center circle, the diameter is around 12 feet. Early medicine wheels were built of stones like this, varying in size, where every stone was placed for a reason and had its own purpose, representing things like Mother Earth, Father Sun, Grandfather Moon, Grandmother Moon. These were, place, these were places where ceremonies took place, where people would pray, 
and this still happens today, people gather around Bighorn a lot. They are, play, they are a place for healing and the, these sacred sites hold a lot of energy. The symbol, the medicine wheel can take on many forms. It can be an ancient carving. It can be an artifact. It can be a piece of art and much more. The teachings are vast with many different interpretations. There is a simplicity about the medicine wheel, yet it can be quite complex, consisting of many layers, many layers of teachings. The more you study it, the more you will find, the more you will learn. The many different interpretations come from the different cultures that use it. There isn't one more correct than the other. The one thing to point out is not all Native American cultures use the medicine wheel. Our surrounding Pueblos do not use it, as well as the Navajo Nation. It is widely seen on the plains. Although the details of the medicine wheel may differ, and I'll get into that a little bit later, the basic teaching is the same. And that is, the teachings come together to help us live life fully and walk the earth in a good way, peacefully and harmoniously. I would like to read a quote by Black Elk. Black Elk, Elk is pictured over here on the left side. Black Elk was a Lakota medicine man, a holy man. He was also a visionary. Everything an Indian does is in a circle, and that is because the power of the world always works in circles. So to be balanced, everything has to work together. The universe is constantly flowing, giving us everything that we need. So what does the circle itself represent? The circle represents the circle of life, the circle of self-awareness, and the circle of knowledge. Everything flows in a circle. It represents the continuous pattern of ongoing life. In this circle, there is no beginning and there is no end. Everything is connected within the wheel. Now, depending on the origin or the tribe, you will follow the teachings either clockwise or counterclockwise. The lines that intersect represent the paths of man, the choice of taking the good road or the bad road, the good decision or bad decision. Um, they also represent the path of the sun. The center of the medicine wheel, depending on culture, can represent wisdom, the creator, complete balance, the self, or the center of the earth. Most medicine wheels that you will see are broken up into four quadrants. You will see the number four repeated, and that is because the number four is considered a sacred number. One of the teachings is the four directions, east, south, west, and north. Each direction represents values that help us to understand ourselves and help us to keep healthy within the world. Another teaching is the four stages of life. In the east, the yellow section on the Lakota medicine wheel, you have birth. This is where innocence and purity takes place. In the southern section, the red section, you have youth and adolescence. This is a time of growth, the beginning of knowledge, a time of mental development. In the West, the black section, you have adulthood or parenthood. And this is a time of responsibilities, a time when you find meaning in your life. The Northern section, the white section, you have elder, grandparents, and death. This is a place of, place of wisdom a time of sharing your lifetime knowledge. This is also a time of rest and reflection. This is a time when we find an understanding of the spiritual world. 
The medicine wheel is a continuous cycle that is in constant movement and change. Life is not seen in a linear fashion. It is not seen like you were born and then you die. It is viewed as continuous. There is no beginning and there is no end. Another teaching is the four sacred medicines, tobacco, cedar, sage, and sweetgrass. These are four sacred plants. They are used in ceremony and used for healing. The four sacred medicines is one common thing that varies among tribes and locations. You have the four elements of earth, air, fire, earth, and water. These are our life-giving forces. We cannot exist without them. And we have the four races of mankind. This is according to an indigenous view. There are, they, these are referenced by color. The colors can vary among tribes. One difference you may see is blue instead of black. And that may be because black may be a sacred color used for specific purposes, but the meaning overall is still the same. The medicine wheel teaches us that we are all members of the human race. We are all the same human race. It teaches us that we need to learn to live together in a more loving way. We need to put aside division, then we will see peace. Everything in the medicine wheel has a relationship with each other, including relationships with one another. When there is an imbalance, like much of what we are seeing today, there will be unrest, there will be no peace, and there will be no harmony. Another teaching, is the four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. We have the four sacred animals. This is according to the Lakota medicine wheel, eagle, buffalo, wolf, and bear. The sacred animals vary among tribes, culture, and location. But here's an example, the eagle, buffalo, wolf, and bear. The eagle you will see um, often, it's very common. The eagle is believed to carry prayers up to the creator. The eagle flies closest to the sun. The four sacred animals are the keepers of that direction, and they are responsible for the teachings in that direction. We have the four times of day, morning, noon, evening, and night. We have the four moon cycles. We have the four elements of being, spiritual, physical, emotional, and mental. And there are more teachings beyond these. So what is my goal when I teach the medicine wheel? First of all, I want to raise awareness of the medicine wheel, what it is, what do we use it for, what does it look like? I also want to acknowledge and honor the various cultural traditions and nations. When I talk about various cultures or differences within the medicine wheel, please understand that not all Native Americans are the same. Sadly, this is a common assumption. Each tribe, each nation has their own language, their own culture, their own beliefs, their own values. Uh, to give you a little perspective, we have 567 tribes nationally. At APS, 123 tribes are represented. At my school alone, I have 13 tribes represented. So it's very important to recognize those differences and to honor those differences. I want to instill an appreciation and pride in my students. And you do this by getting to know them, getting to know who your students are, where they come from. You want to develop a relationship with them, with their families. This ultimately leads to a greater respect. I want to foster healing and growth. I want to foster a want and to succeed. I encounter kids all the time that have already given up, and I'm talking elementary school. They haven't received parent support. Some parents just don't value education, and they haven't received much teacher support. So they don't care if they succeed or not. 
I want them to value education. I want to foster that need. I want to empower my students to achieve spiritual, physical, emotional, and mental wellness. This is where much of my focus tends to be. This is where I see the most need. So my focus, the four elements of being, spiritual, physical, emotional, and mental. Just a side note, before I start teaching any of this, the medicine wheel as a whole, I always get permission from parents um, or guardians. I also teach drum making, beading, weaving, uh, dream catchers, pottery, and other things. I get permission for those things too. I give my contact information for any questions or concerns. I also invite parents in for the teachings or to help because I always need the help. We have a large population of Native students at Hodgin. Um, many students come in, I'm, excuse me, many parents want to come in to learn for themselves. I do this because uh, some families are still very traditional and don't want certain things taught. Um, most families, however, welcome the knowledge that is being taught. I also don't make any of this mandatory. It's always a choice to the student and to the families. So a student that may want to learn about the medicine will may not want to learn about dream catchers and that's, that's perfectly fine. It's totally up to them and their families. What I teach here is somewhat of a personal interpretation because of the diversity of my students and where they come from. It's a com compilation of teachings that I feel my students um, can relate to. I don't focus on a specific medicine wheel, but I do refer to the Lakota medicine wheel with an understanding that there are differences among tribes. I also teach this, um, the whole teaching of the medicine wheel takes a whole year and it even goes beyond that. It's a long, long process. I started teaching the medicine wheel because I saw a benefit for all. I make the four elements of being my focus because I see a great need for my students, for my students' families, and for society as a whole. The medicine will gives us direction in life. It helps us find ourselves. It helps us connect with ourselves, with others, and with the natural world. We approach the teachings in a holistic way. The four quadrants support each other. They work together to nurture the person as a whole. They all deserve equal attention. So you have, you have to have all four quadrants to operate fully. If you are imbalanced in one, another may suffer. There is a dependence on one another. So for example, if you get sick physically, maybe your mental aspect will suffer. These four aspects of life should be developed equally through the four stages of life. Spiritual. This is a place for our soul, a place for connections. We want to develop strong inner spirits. We want to develop connections. This connection can take on many names, many forms. It's a deep connection within yourself. It can be different for different people. Those connections may be with a higher power, connection with the creator, connection with Mother Earth, connection to nature. This is a place where we honor and respect diverse beliefs, cultures, traditions, and spiritual ceremonies. So your students may have to miss school for several days because they had to go see a medicine man or someone in their family had to go see a medicine man. Uh, generally, they, they support one another if they do this, or they may participate in ceremony. So we as teachers need to support this aspect by acknowledging and respecting what the individual has to do to keep, keep this aspect in balance. So how do we nurture the spiritual aspect? The spiritual aspect can be nurtured through stories, through teachings, through prayer, through smudging, through meditation, or vision quests. As a teacher, we do not nurture through prayer or through smudging. 
that is left up to the student and the family. I do teach meditation, and it may sound new agey, but it's actually been around for hundreds of years and used in many Native American cultures for hundreds of years. Meditation is embedded in ceremony, spiritual practices, and used in daily life. It goes back to vision quests. This is where an individual goes on a spiritual journey, usually at a specific age, and usually it's a boy. And they do this to attain knowledge or a vision or guidance from a spiritual world through meditation. It is guided by a medicine man. It involves fasting. And it is done in a natural setting. You're surrounded by nature. In my class, we start with guided meditations and move to sound meditations, using um, usually using Native American drumming or flute music. The changes I see in my students is actually quite profound. Kids naturally become more compassionate. They learn to regulate their emotions better. They definitely become calmer. I have several students with behavior issues who come just for meditation. Usually it just takes between three to five minutes. Um, they come for meditation and they quickly go back to class. Physical. This aspect relates to our physical bodies, eating healthy, exercising, awareness. Our goal is to have strong, healthy bodies and being aware of what our bodies need. So how do we nurture the physical aspect? Obviously, by educating students on the importance of nutrition and exercise. We teach how certain things like stress can cause physical damage. We teach how important getting the proper amount of sleep is. You can nurture this aspect by incorporating traditional practices. I do things like drum making where we get a log. We cut the log, we chisel out the wood, we sand it, we work with, um, with buffalo skin. Um, I do pottery where we work with clay. It's very hands-on and develops that connection to the land. Emotional, this is the place of the heart. It relates to our emotions and our feelings. And our goal here is to have inner peace. How do we nurture that emotional aspect? This is a place where we teach kids that it is okay to share emotions, both positive and negative emotions. We acknowledge them all. Journaling can be helpful in healing. We know that past experiences can lead to fear and anxiety. So writing them down can release some of those negative emotions. We also know that negative emotions lead to an imbalance, which in turn leads to anger and depression. So I instill that it is okay to ask for help. If a counselor is needed, then I get one involved. Meditation is also a way to nurture that aspect, positive thinking. I teach kids about positive and negative thoughts. When a negative thought arises, I have them replace it with three positive thoughts and social interactions. These are all ways to nurture the emotional aspect. Mental, this aspect relates to the mind. We want to keep our minds healthy. We want to exercise the mind. And how do we do that? We exercise the mind through language, maybe learning a new language, through reading, through music, maybe learning an instrument, through stories, puzzles, games, and growth mindset. The medicine wheel among different cultures and nations. I wanted to show you quickly just some of the different types of medicine wheels. Just by looking at their symbols, you can notice a lot of similarities. This is the Lakota medicine wheel, which I referenced earlier. Here is the Peruvian or Quero medicine wheel. And you also see this medicine wheel circular. On this image right here, it's not. 
Here's the Mexica or Aztec medicine wheel. And we have the African cosmogram. So I haven't studied all of these in depth. That is something I, I continually do. I am always learning. So in closing, I would like to read a couple of my favorite quotes or prayers to you. The first one is, as I walk with beauty, and there are different versions of this Navajo prayer or quote. As I walk, as I walk, the universe is walking with me. In the beauty, it walks before me. In beauty, it walks behind me. In beauty, it walks below me. In beauty, it walks above me. Beauty is on every side. As I walk, I walk with beauty. The next is an Apache blessing. May the sun bring you new energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. So I wish this for each of you. Thank you all for taking the time to attend this. If you have any questions, you can always email me or call me. My contact information is right here. I want to go back to the reference slide really quick. These are some things that um, I reference. Sun Bear, who is the author, his name is Vincent LaDuke. He's also um, the father of activist Winona LaDuke. He's written a, a lot of books related to the medicine wheel. So if you would like to, to um, start your journey with the medicine wheel, this is a good place to start. Um, these are a couple of books that I have, Walk in Balance and Dancing the Wheel by him. Also, the Ontario Native Literacy Coalition puts out uh, a curriculum on the medicine wheel. Black Elk Speaks is always very good. And then there's some YouTube videos um, that you could reference. But there's my contact information again. Always feel free to email me, call me if you have any questions. Um, and that is the end of my presentation. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. I'm just reading the chat. Thank you all very much. Uh, Roberta? Yes. Yes, my name is Jose Robles. I'm a teacher support specialist with